All right, so it's said that lip augmentation is probably one of the most well-known and popular cosmetic procedures. Having the picture-perfect pole is now highly sought after, especially in this age of social media. Well, cosmetic nurse Alicia Henry tell us, t zooming us now to tell us why this is so, um, and to tell us about um, her own practice and how she does this. Alicia, good morning. How are you? Morning. Good morning. I'm good, thank you. Excellent. Good to, to talk to you this morning. Tell us a little bit about this trend. It's not really new, new, is it? It's not new. It's probably new to Jamaica, but it's definitely not new. So lip augmentation has been, has been around for a while. Uh, over the last few years, it became really popular in Jamaica. You see your popular social media influencers getting their lips done. And then with the new social media age and everybody following what they see their favorite influencers doing, it has become quite popular in Jamaica as well. Why? 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 What, what are the reasons that most people will tell you they want to get their <coughs> lips augmented? <laughs> so, uh, as you know, us black women, we naturally have beautiful lips, but why not make it even more beautiful? So when we see these images on social media and you see the perfect pout, the perfect heart shape, beautiful, juicy lips, you think, well, if it's available here, why not have it? Okay, so talk us through how it's done, um, Alicia, because I'm reading here, you can get near surgical results without the risk of anesthesia, taking time off from work. I mean, this can get really, from very basic to really involved. So talk us through the range of procedures that there are. So we go from very minimally invasive procedures, so that would be your typical Botox treatment, to something that's near surgery, which is the non-surgical DVL. So that is actually fillers that are done in the Say that again, the, non, the non-surgical <laughs> what did you say? Non-surgical DVL, DB. which is essentially, yes. So it's a trademark procedure developed by a plastic surgeon in London, Dr. Duku. Mm -hmm. And essentially what that does, it gives you similar results to a BBL, which I'm sure you've heard of. Uh, so that would be the most invasive procedure. I yeah. see. So, so do I come in and base, I mean, we're, we're all different. So our lips are shaped differently. And um, I guess the shape of your face, is that something that you sit and say, okay, well, this will look great. This won't look great. Let me just enhance the natural contour. How, how do you decide on, on how plump or how not plump? <laughs> so that's an excellent question. So each lip procedure is designed for the client. So no two lips are the same. So when you come in for a procedure, the first step is what we call an assessment. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at your face. We're taking into consideration your individual features and we're creating a designer lip that works for your face. So hence the name. So it's a bespoke procedure and it's done based on your individual features. So no two lip treatments are the same. You mm -hmm. say if you feel like your client has unrealistic expectations, you're gonna give them their money back and not treat them. Um, Cause you say the idea of Phyllis is not to change a person, but to do a small enhancement. Uh, tell me, of a time when you've turned somebody back, what, what, did they, what did they expect from you? What kind of magic did they want you to work? <laughs> Hearing me, Alicia? Well, sometimes I do have... So sometimes I have clients who come in and unfortunately they are showing me a picture of somebody else right and they're saying that this is what i want so that is for me a red flag because the goal is never to look like another person the goal is the answer which you have naturally we're not here to create somebody else's face on your face mm. so in cases like that then unfortunately you may not be the right candidate for the procedure yeah one of the things he pointed out is that when they just get their lips done, it has like a swollen, juicy look. And then after that, it, 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 it looks more natural. And you find that some people say, oh, no, I like it like this. Could you inject it again? Um, and you have to educate them. What, what's the time frame 
uh, between injections? I'm, I, it might, that might be the layman question, but I, I hope you understand what I'm asking. Yes, and uh, of course. So when you get lips in particular, when you get your lips done, they tend to look super juicy, super plump, especially for the first two weeks after the procedure. So after that, it does go down and it looks a little bit more natural. A very good lip treatment, you're not able to really look at the client after it's fully healed and know that something's done. So if I have a client who's chased in the soul and look, that's where the ethical component comes in with my job, where right? I have to educate the client that, listen, this is not an achievable result, achievable result long term. This is not the goal. The goal is for you to look natural when it's healed. Mm -hmm. So I have to educate and I have to sometimes say no to these procedures. So a typical time frame for lip injections is uh, once a year. Believe it or not. Oh, okay. Really once a year is what's recommended. Okay. And I see you saying you don't treat clients yeah. who are too young. Uh, if I don't think I can give you a good result, I'll recommend other options. Uh, did I just see one of your clients there, Alicia? Uh, gen you treat gentlemen as well. That surprised me. Why did that surprise me? Of course. I didn't of know. Of course, we treat everyone. <laughs> Men come to get their lips done. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Not a large percentage, but definitely yes, both locally and, and internationally as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Sorry. so and so, you work from here, Alicia, or you work from foreign? Or are you kind of back and forth-ish? I am back and forth. So I'm in Jamaica once per month. I've been in consistently for uh, over two years. I do have a clinic here in Canada, so that's where I'm based. I am. I was born in Jamaica. I live in Canada, and I was trained here in Canada. So I'm here most of the time, but I do come to Jamaica once per month, and I work in Jamaica as well. Okay, wonderful. Well, if people want to get in touch with you, what do they do? So Instagram is the easiest way. I also have like a WhatsApp link on Instagram as well. But for the most part, it's word of mouth and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, there's a handle at Dr. Is it Duku dot clinics? Um, that's, that's so that's uh, my main clinic here. My personal Instagram is at cosmetic nurse Alicia. Okay. So that's okay. my personal link. Okay. Gotcha. So uh, either one. Say again. Say, uh, did she say either one? Yes, either, either one. one. All okay. right. Thank okay. you, Alicia. All right. And in case you guys are wondering, um, Canadian, Canadian licensed nurse, master nurse injector, injectables educator, certified in gluteal augmentation, and also certified in thread lifting techniques. So cosmetic nurse, Alicia Henry there, talking to us about um, designer lips. Mm -hmm.